Today I'm going to go ahead and start stripping down this transmission to build it up and make it a lot stronger. The first thing I need to do is figure out what's usable and what isn't. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and pull off the dipstick tube, pull off the transfer case linkage, get the transmission mount off that's on the bottom, and then start cracking into the case. So I don't know if I'm going to be using mostly this linkage or mostly the first gen linkage that's in the truck now or maybe even a combination of the two. The only thing I forgot to get was the torque converter for the core charge. So for the most part while I'm doing this rebuild I'm going to be referencing this ATSG manual which encompasses the 42RH, the 46RH, which is in the truck now, and then the 47RH, which is the transmission that I'm gonna be building up. So one of the first things that I'm gonna do is just use my dial indicator to see how much end play the input shaft has. So I just have it mounted to the case there, and now I'm gonna move the input shaft in and out to see how much play it has back and forth. And according to this, I'm allowed to have this as a range, so I'm somewhere in the middle. This thing is pretty heavy, and getting it on the bench by myself is kind of a pain. So I'm going to set it upright, and then pull the overdrive housing, and then I'll have two separate pieces to break down. It looks like this transmission has definitely been taken apart at some point. This little cover, it's got like a really ugly RTV job. You can see just kind of a mess. Either way, time to go ahead and pull this overdrive unit off the back. And in order to do that, I'm just going to remove all the bolts along here and then lift it off and set it on the bench. So there's all the bolts. They're all the same length and they're all a 7 16 head or 11 millimeter depending on what you got in the toolbox. I just have to remember that these two funky little brackets go on top. So it turns out I was actually wrong. I had heard that all I had to do to pull the overdrive off is just remove all the bolts that hold the pieces of the case together, but that is not the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow the instructions in the ATSG, which are pull the oil pan, pull the valve body, pull the accumulator piston and spring, and then I can start taking the overdrive housing off. I'm gonna put a couple bolts back in, tip it on its side, and then pull the oil pan off and start pulling the guts out. I already pulled it once when I was buying the transmission to inspect it. This is what I found in the bottom of the pan. It looks like a piece of a snap ring or something. As it turns out, there was another piece in there that I didn't see. So it looks like I've got two pieces of a snap ring. Now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all of the linkage so that I can pull the valve body out of the bottom of the transmission. So there's 10 bolts securing the valve body to the transmission case. There's two lengths, a long length and a shorter length. Obviously the long ones are for the thicker portions of the valve body and the shorter ones are for the thinner portions. The next thing I need to do on the right hand side of the valve body here is disconnect that little circlip so that I can pull the selector shaft off of the bottom of the valve body and then I should be able to get the entire assembly out of the transmission here. So right off the bat I'm seeing some pretty interesting things here. I'd say that without question this transmission has definitely been rebuilt at least once. As you can see someone has actually welded 
the lip of this drum to fix it. It's kind of a ghetto repair and then they ground it flat-ish. You can see where they nicked the drum with the grinder when they were grinding down that tack weld. Instead of replacing the drum, which I mean I guess that works, but kind of ghetto. And then another thing is the input shaft actually has a lot of radial play, which my manual doesn't say anything about. But, I mean, it definitely doesn't look good. I don't know. Could be just because this band is super loose. That was another thing I noticed. So, I don't know. We'll have to pull it apart further and see. Now I'm going to go ahead and tip this thing back on its face and then try and pull that overdrive housing off again. So I'm pulling the little accumulator out and strangely there's no spring which is weird because there's supposed to be one. This thing's going to be a lot more manageable now that it's in two pieces. So as I was trying to figure out how to take this pump off, I noticed that the threads in these holes are the same pitch as these bolts used to mount the overdrive to the back of the case. And then since they're larger, as you can see, they're actually not threading into these holes in the case. They're pushing on them instead. Maybe with a really stuck one you'd still need a slide hammer, but in my case, all I had to do was just thread these bolts through the pump to push on the case to force it out. Here's that front band adjuster goodness right there. There's still a decent amount of material left on this band, but I'm still going to be upgrading it. Now I'm going to pull the front clutch assembly out, come hither, there we go. Now I'm going to pull out the input shaft and I need to be careful not to lose the special thrust washer. That sounds like it. Thing. So that little guy and then this little guy behind it, the side with less gouging in the face was facing forward. This now there's a little snap ring in here I need to pull before I can take out the little reverse drum. Next I need to pull out this band and the little reverse drum and the way that I'm going to do that is loosen up the set screw right here, loosen up the band, pull the drum out, then pull the band out. This band isn't that bad either. Still has a decent amount of friction material left. It's starting to turn into some more manageable chunks now. Next I need to pull out the overrunning clutch, which allows rotation in only one direction. And I need to be careful to remember how exactly it's oriented. Next I need to compress the kick down servo and remove the snap ring and then pull the guts out.
Now I'm going to go ahead and pull the low reverse servo. This one has a lot softer spring that I should just be able to hold down as I remove the snap ring, hopefully. So this washer was sitting with the side with the slightly rounded lips facing up, so sharper side down. That one was pretty loose in the bore. Next I'm going to go ahead and pull these two levers, starting with the rear one. So this little guy has two O-rings on it. Now this one needs to be unscrewed. So there's the little plug that comes out. I want to be really careful not to bar it. And there we go. This one looks like it's unidirectional. Next I'm going to go ahead and pull these fittings off. The case is now empty. All of the components are laid out here. There's the overdrive over there. Valve body. Now I'm going to start stripping down all the sub-assemblies. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tear down these sub-assemblies like the pump and all the clutch packs and everything. I still have yet to solve the mystery of what exactly these two pieces of snap ring were attached to, but I'm guessing as I dig into these sub-assemblies, I'm probably going to find out. So I've got my oil pump assembly, I have my specialty measuring tools. So I'm going to go ahead and strip down this assembly and see what I need to replace. So I think I definitely need to replace the bushing. It's kind of disintegrating. So I got the pump bushing pressed out. You can see that it's starting to disintegrate quite a bit. So it's time for a new one. I was able to punch it out with this 36 millimeter socket. I'm still struggling with this guy, but I'm just gonna keep beating on it with various things and hopefully it comes out. So I finally got the seal out. Uh, the way that I had to do it is I had to bend up this lip that sets the depth. So this lip sits on here and I had to bend it over and then smash on that and I was able to get it to come out. Alright, so I went through the pump and the reaction shaft and everything. One of the biggest problems is the clearance between the outer pump gear and the housing is too big. It's supposed to be up to seven and a half thousandths and it's like nine and a half so it's uh, I guess it's worn beyond what's allowable. But uh, I'll talk to some shops that know more than I do. So next I'm going to disassemble the front clutch assembly. Got the big wavy snap ring out and clutch plates on out of here and see what they look like. All I'm doing to compress down the retainer is just snug down these just a little bit. Nothing crazy because I don't want to warp this. And then I'm going to pull this snap ring out and then I can take out the spring and everything behind it. Sick. So it kind of blew up on me a little bit, but everything seems alright. I found all the parts. So the way that it's oriented, there's these three little tangs and they align in the middle of the pair of posts between each of the sets of springs so it looks like this now I just need to unseat 
the piston there we go got to make sure that little check ball is in there and that it's not seized up the seal was situated with that groove facing down I inspected everything in the front clutch assembly Next, I'm pulling apart the rear clutch and the input shaft. I need to go ahead and get this big snap ring out of here. This one is not wavy, it's just straight. Now I can pull out the pack. On the top of the stack, it's the selective steel. Clutch, steel, clutch, steel clutch steel clutch and then this one with the lip side goes down next up need to pull out the wavy snap ring that's in the bottom here so the piston has a seal inside the bore and a seal outside so if we call this the top of the piston facing up with the seals, the grooved part faces down. There's another little check ball, got to make sure that's free. So there was already a little nick between these two parts, so I just scribed next to it and that's how I'm going to remember the alignment on this. I don't think it matters that much, but I'm just going to put it back the way that I had it. Now one thing I need to inspect real carefully is the input shaft. I'm not 100% sure if I'm running a billet shaft yet, just because I'm not going to be launching the truck, I'm only going to be towing with it. So I'm going to look it over real good and see if there's any evidence of cracking by looking along this portion here. This is probably the most delicate part. I got the input shaft and the rear clutch inspected, now it's time for the next sub-assembly. Next I'm inspecting the planetary gear train here and I need to check how much end play I have to know if I need to replace the thrust washers or not. Yep, looks like I do. This piece comes off. It's a single piece. Then underneath, here's a thrust washer. This one's really worn out. There's no copper coating left on it. Then there's another thrust washer here. This one's in a little better shape. Next is another thrust washer. This one again is pretty worn out. Next piece is the rear planetary. Faces like that. Looks like there's another thrust washer in here. There it is. This one's really worn out. And there we go. Now I need to inspect all these parts and then decide what I need to buy. So I slapped it back together just for safekeeping. And just a heads up, the illustration that it shows doesn't match a 47RH. I think it's for one of the lesser transmissions or something. There's additional parts that I'm not seeing when I pull this apart. And I looked at what a guy had taken apart online and it matches what I have here. So. I don't think it was assembled incorrectly. So I looked over the rest of this stuff, servos, accumulator, those are getting replaced with billet parts. And this one has a little bit of scoring, but it's not bad. So I think I'm gonna reuse it. So just to summarize my findings from the inspection, I'm gonna need a new accumulator spring, a new billet accumulator. I'm gonna have to obviously buy some ATF and assembly lube. I'm gonna get a bushing kit to throw at this thing including the oil pump bushing and a lot of the other ones too. I'm going to need a new oil pump seal, gasket kit. I may need a new pump housing as well. I'm going to need new seal rings, new thrust washers where necessary. I'm going to need new clutches and steels obviously. Still not sure who I'm going to have build up my valve body. I still haven't decided if I'm going to run a billet input shaft yet. I'm going to price out new planetaries to see if I can get them, but I think I can reuse the ones that I have. 
depending on the price, I'll probably get a lot of the new springs too. Whether I get a billet input or not, I'm going to get the cast iron seal rings, the upgraded kind that came later. I'm going to try and get a new spacer ring that goes in the bottom of the rear drum. I think I want a new driving shell as well because the one that I have has that funky repair on it. Today I'm going to disassemble the overdrive section. I'm hoping today that I will find the rest of this snap ring. I didn't find it in the main section of the transmission. Maybe it'll be in here. I don't know. So first off, I'm going to remove the overdrive clutch pack here. It's just a retainer ring. Five clutch plates, five steels, and one selective steel. Next was this big snap ring here. It is wavy as well. These ones are coming out by hand fairly easily. This one is straight. Ah, I think I might have finally found it. I'm almost positive that I just found out where these pieces of snap ring came from. If you look down in here, you can see a missing section of snap ring right there. <sighs> That's a relief. I'm amazed that they didn't damage anything on their way into the pan. Next I'm going to pull the locating ring access cover. This requires a T25 bit. Need to expand this ring. So there's the snap ring I was just messing with to get the gear train out. So that came out next. So the snap ring that I was just messing with rode inside this recess. Now I need to pull the governor support snap ring. You can see it in the bottom there with the two little holes. So that needs to come out and then these tubes and the governor can come out next. Next I have to remove the snap ring that retains the rear bearing. There's the snap ring for the rear bearing. There's the rear bearing. Alright, the case is almost empty. Now I just need to pull out the parking paw stuff. Alright, next I need to pull that bolt right there. That snap ring. And then there's a little spring that I have to note the orientation of. And then pull all this stuff out. There's the funky little shaft retainer bolt. There's the snap ring. There's the little reaction plug. This little pin faces down into a recess in the case. So it sits in there like that. And then this snap ring sits on top to retain it. So now I have to pull the parking pawl shaft out of that little hole right there. It's that hollow-ended pin. Somehow I have to pull that out. And then I can get to the pawl and the spring. All right, the case is now empty except for the seal right there. I'll punch that out later though. In order to pull the parking pawl shaft out, I just had to stick a couple scribes in the end of it and then kind of expand outwards to pull on it. And it sits in there with the hollow end up, obviously, just like that. The little plug goes on top to retain that. Parking pawl goes in there like that. And then this spring goes on the back side and then braces against the case to force the sharpened end of the pawl towards the outside of the case. Kind of like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the overdrive gear train. First I'm going to take the 
governor off. I need to remove one of these circlips. Now I need to remove this snap ring right here. Next, it looks like there's a thin washer. Very thin washer comes off next. All right, just so that I can make sure I keep this straight in my head, starting from this side of the governor, the first thing is this snap ring, followed by this thin washer followed by this which sits in there like that this goes through the back and there's a circlip for the end of it this governor valve shaft sits in there just like this there's a little recess on it and that faces this side of the governor the governor valve sits in there just like that and then there's a circlip on the end now the next thing I need to do is pull off the entire governor and in order to do that I have to pull off this circlip right here there's the governor snap ring now I should be able to pull the whole thing off. So the governor is actually keyed to the output shaft via this little guy right here. So the key sits in this slot right here and then that's how the governor gets clocked. Next thing I need to do is pull the snap ring and then pull this front bearing off. ring groove faces up. Alright, next thing I need to do is stick this assembly in my shop press and I need to push down on the clutch hub with my tool number 6227-1 and then I need to remove this snap ring, the broken one on the clutch pack here and then I also need to remove the ring that's on the uh, splines right here that retains the hub there's the clutch hub retainer alright now I should gently be able to relieve the tension on this assembly I'm glad that I finally solved the mystery of the broken snap ring pieces. Set these aside and move along to the next step here. This side faced up. There's the overrunning clutch assembly. Next is another one of these. This side faces like that. These parts are made out of such a hard steel that I'm not actually able to scribe them all that well, so I just put little paint marks on there. There's my reference of the annulus gear to the output shaft and my reference of the annulus gear to the direct drum. Now that it's marked, I can pull the direct drum off. And in order to do that, I'm just going to pull the snap ring out of the bottom. There's the snap ring that sits in the bottom. Alright, 
Now I get the outer retaining ring out and then I can pull the direct drum off. Let's see if these are the same. Yeah, they're the same. All right. The side with one circlip channel faces up and the side with places for circlips on either side of the annulus gear faces down. There's the snap ring that holds the annulus gear to the output shaft. There we go. Excellent.